Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dylan Havert. Uh, I have been with Anthology for many, many years. I am an architect and the manager of the developer relations team. Uh, and this is Getting Familiar with Blackboard Learn REST APIs webinar. Uh, it will be presented by Davey Herrera, who, who works on the developer relations team, and who's a, an excellent member of, of Anthology for the past three years. Um, the thing that I would state is this is intended to be a, a web series. That's the first of many sessions you see on, on Davey's slide here. Um, we wanted this to be a, a foundational uh, presentation that we could answer a lot of what we feel are, are some of the, the basic or, or fundamental questions that we get asked relatively frequently by the community uh, via our various channels. So we wanted to uh, provide a, an answer to a, a broad scope of, of things at a, at a relatively um, high level. Uh, and then as we progress through these sessions, uh, we'll start getting into to deeper or more complicated and, and or specific questions. Um, but for now, I will turn this over to Davey and let him introduce himself and uh, get started with the presentation. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, so my name is Davey. As Dylan was saying, I'm going to be presenting you uh, getting familiar with Blackboard Learn REST APIs. This is going to be the first of many, many sessions that we are going to be having uh, around this year. Uh, you're going to see along a lot of kitties as well. <laughs> Those are my kitties. Uh, so this is the agenda. Uh, we're going to start first with um, an introduction. We're going to talk about where, where, do I, where do I start? Where do I begin? Who can I ask questions? And then we're just going to jump to resources, like how do I use the developer portal? How do I use the developer.anthology.com site? How do I use DocSide? And uh, then it's going to be how do I use the tools? Uh, which tools? Then I'm, we're going to talk about AMIs. We're, we're going to talk about uh, mapping roles with a bookmark. We're going to talk about two-leg versus three-leg authentication. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, best practices. Uh, we're going to talk about cache token, call limits. And at the end, we're going to talk about a little bit of a simple application that I created in Python, which I feel everybody can create as well with a little bit of knowledge in Python. Uh, and I feel it's, it's pretty, pretty simple and pretty, pretty good. So we'll, we'll, we'll see it later on. So about me uh, and my cats, <laughs> I am a 30-something guy that lives in a little town near Bogota. It's called Villeta. Uh, I love playing video games with friends, hanging out with some Jameson and Soda. Thank you, Michelle, for that. When I was an anthology together, she offered me one, and it was amazing. I do listen to a lot of music. Uh, I have been working on anthology and Blackboard since October 1st, 2018. Uh, I started as a tier one support specialist, and I am currently working as a developer support engineer. So that can translate as a developer advocate. I have for kitties, which, like I said, you will be seeing <laughs> along the presentation. You'll also see a dog, which is not mine, but uh, he's pretty, pretty nice to me. And uh, I did a similar presentation with very, very like basic stuff about REST APIs. Uh, we call it REST APIs for Beginner. It is in our doc site. Uh, you can check that out, uh, where I talked a lot about uh, HTTP and how we have different codes and different uh, verbs to do actions which are usually pretty straightforward. Uh, if you really need to contact me or do you want to contact me after this, this conference, uh, you can contact us at developers.anthology.com. I will be more than happy to help you out and resolve any questions you may have. So first things first, where do I start? So if I'm a developer, uh, I wouldn't know where to go. Uh, if I was hired to do this job and do like write some code, write an application, uh, and the institution that hired me say, hey, even though if I maybe I'm a third party or maybe I'm hired directly with the institution or I, I am a black administrator and now I have a need, a specific need, uh, well, where do I start? So I'm going to add some context first to it. So I, I have an institution called Institution for Developers, and it requires a different way to manage enrollments for specific internal reasons. And uh, you need to be able me as a, the developer or maybe the application, you need to be able to create, remove, update, and get enrollments from different courses automatically and magically, because magic, we want it to hit as quickly and good as and fast as possible. With the click of a button, we just wanted to just like show us that information. And uh, yeah, it, is, it was part of the requirements. And 
we have been doing this for a while. We had access to DDA, maybe. We were able to just like go in into Black to Learn and just click and just uh, check, I don't know, this is the enrollments and just copy and paste it. I don't know, maybe just do an export. But now I'm having a lot more tasks. I feel a little bit like I need to get this information faster. I need to do something with it. So I'm like, hey, who do I ask for help? How, what can I do about this? So I'm gonna support, but uh, should I ask my the support team? Should I ask my account executive? Should I ask my SDM? If I do so, most likely, you will be redirected to us, to developers at ontology.com. That's the good place to start. Uh, just writing us an email saying, hey, I have this requirement of me just need to ma manage course memberships, but I just, I just don't know where to go. So we will be able to give you information, but you may be asking yourself, hey, what are they gonna send me? What, what, what will I understand it? Will it be easy to get? So you will receive resources. That's what we're gonna provide. We're gonna provide you valuable information that you will be able to find all the time 24 seven, like available to you in English. So which resources are you gonna receive? The first one is gonna be docs.anthology.com. That's usually the one that we send the most. You there are gonna see how to do some stuff, how you can uh, create a REST API application, how you can uh, authenticate with an API application, how you can do a lot of stuff. It's gonna be found there. You can find a lot of demos and videos. You will see a lot of them. I'm gonna show up in a couple of them maybe. Uh, you will also find a lot of GitHub repos. There are, there's a lot of code in there, like, like a lot of code in there. Uh, there is also developer.anthology.com, which is uh, our developer portal. Uh, there you can view current and previous API endpoints and their uh, models, which they're, um, they're like available there for you to check. You can manage your applications and you can manage your groups. Um, we will jump in into that later, later on. What, what else will you receive? You will receive uh, maybe a community.anthology.com link or uh, as, uh, or, or we could ask you, hey, this is a very good idea. Please submit it here on community side. So you can just like, uh, uh, we can just like read it, work on it internally. We believe it may be add value for everybody and just like go for it. Uh, you can see previous posts of people. Maybe if you have a question and you think, hey, maybe I'm the only one, but you will find out that sometimes a lot of people has already asked it. Uh, and if nobody has, well, you can create a new one. We also have the health.anthology.com site, which uh, it will provide you release updates. It's pretty good because it will tell you what we changed in each, in each release. And you can also find uh, how to's on different products, including Black Learn. Uh, it will give you a lot of like step-by-step, -step, uh, go to this place, uh, click here, click on this button. It will give you a lot of that. So it's this site is like, to me, pretty valuable. We get a lot of data from here. Now, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of those resources. Uh, so please buckle up because this is gonna be <laughs> quite a journey because I'm gonna jump through every single of those resources and we're gonna see like specific things that each one of them may have. So let's just, for example, let's start with the developer portal. What can I do here? I can sign up if I, if I, if I uh, wanna create a new account. I can just click there and it will show me this window and asking me to uh, create to create an account is asking me, hey, do you want to click on agree? And I, we have received emails from a few clients that say, hey, when I click on agree, it doesn't show me. But the thing is that it's not showing you like a scroll by default, but it does have a scroll. So uh, if we go down, it will like now change color and I say, hey, now I can click on agree. Oh, okay. Now I can just like click on agree and create my new account. That's great. Um, what else we have received? Oh, uh, where do I see the, the, the API endpoints? When, when you come here, you will see here explore button and you will find the, the all of our APIs just here, just waiting for you to check. Uh, you will see here this drop down button that will tell you, hey, this is like uh, our latest supported version is gonna be selected by default. Um, you can see here we have 3957, 3956, and it will go all the way down until like 3202, like 08. And um, 
uh, you can check those out if you are not one of those versions, which I think we're not supporting anymore, but they're there historically for us to check. It will load that information automatically. Uh, unfortunately, my internet is, I don't know, a little bit slow, but we'll check on this later on. We have the Anthology Dev Docs, which we have the developer documentation. You can find, like I was saying, a lot of information here. For example, if I click here on REST APIs, layout changes, telling you, hey, you can learn about a learn, you can learn about a student, you can learn about ally, but uh, in, you can also learn about UEF and premium APIs. Uh, and if I go here, I'll see, hey, I have getting started, I have admin, working to learn APIs, examples, a sandbox, which we'll talk about it later. And if I click here on getting started, there's another menu that will tell me, hey, first steps we learn REST API. Hey, what happens if I click here? Well, it will give you a document that will even tell you what REST stands for. So now we know that REST, REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Um, you can register as a developer, an Anatoly developer. You can join the community. What application do I need? It will tell you all the information, including this, which we will talk again later on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. I've read it a couple of times. Uh, I believe we can improve it a little bit, but, um, we hope that this current state of it is as good as it can get, although we believe it can be improved a little bit, but it is pretty good right now. I was reading it. I was going through it and I was like, Hey, this is, this is good data. This is good information that we're giving away here. So, uh, you can find also here like a, a little uh, table of contents that you can just like use to scroll in. Maybe you just need to, hey, I just need to talk about, I just need to read about call and services. You can jump in and uh, well, you can find more information. For example, here, what about LTI arrest? So this is a discussion that we were having about it. Like when do I choose, when do I choose which one? When do I choose LTI? When do I choose rest? Or why not both rest and LTI? Um, so yeah, this is, this is actually pretty good documentation. Uh, let's see if this loaded. Okay. It loaded. So, uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to check here on this side. The first one is, like I said, this drop down is very important for you to know. It usually goes to the latest supported version, which right now is 52. I think we had an update recently to 54, if I'm not wrong, but I, I can click it here, but I'm not going to, because like I said, it's pretty, really spotty here today. Uh, the second link that I want you to check is this one. It says uh, it is a JSON file. If I click on it, it's just going to load a huge, huge JSON file. It is really, really big, but it, this is basically this whole thing, this whole, uh, all, all of, all of these, like, I'm going to call it a table, but it's all this content just displayed in a JSON way. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to load it right now. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how do you navigate through this? So the first thing is if I'm come, if I do want to talk, let's say I need to review announcements and announcements is uh, I'm saying here, Hey, this is a, it says get, well, it's get is I'm just going to get that information post. I'm going to send that information, delete. I'm just going to remove it and patch. I'm going to update it. It just, it's just right there. So those are the, the, the verbs that we, uh, we were talking first that I talked about in our previous um presentations and uh, if i click here it's gonna load and it's gonna give me a lot of information and sometimes you can be like whoa whoa this is this is way too much what, what do, where do i go how do i read it okay so the first thing is this usually gives you like a little bit of a, a description of this endpoint but it usually also gives you something very very important that maybe sometimes when we're reading and we just are flying through and we have like we need to do this now we don't notice and it is uh the entitlements it is very important to you to review this because those entitlements uh we're gonna do those later on but uh, those entitlements are the ones that will allow us to provide our application with the correct privileges in order for it to be uh to to operate okay so this is this is pretty pretty important for you to like see that it's there uh, most of them have it if they don't, uh, you can probably just contact us at the email and we will tell you, hey, those are the ones until we can update the, the documentation. Uh, it will give you like specific parameters that uh, it, it can accept. If it's a required parameter, it will tell you, hey, it's going to be on a, on, a, on, a, on a red asterisk and it's going to tell you this is required. You have to pass this. I'm expecting it to do to happen. 
Okay, so those are like the two things that I wanted to show you here. Now, if I go down, it will show me, hey, what is this? What is does? What is this thing? So the code 200 is it's saying it's okay. Like you send a request and it's responding you something, and now we're having like uh, it is returning us this JSON. But you can be like, well, I read it and I don't get it. What what is what what is ID? What is title? So here in this window we have a model. The problem is doesn't look like a like a button, but it is a button. You can click it and you can click here model and say, hey, well, oh, okay. So now I know ID is a string, but it's a read only value. So if I want to send it, it's not going to accept it because it's read only. I cannot update that ID. Okay, this is a primary key identifier and I cannot do that. I have a title, which is a string. Uh, I have availability. Uh, I can see how I can uh, pass that information. It's giving me like the steps of how I can do that. Uh, show out looking is just a boolean. Maybe say yes or no, a zero or one. Same here, same thing here. Uh, showing courses, maybe say yes or no. Uh, a created is a string, but it's a string that is expecting a date and a time. But in this case, it's just read only, so it doesn't. It doesn't need. It, you cannot pass this as well. It will be only for reading. And uh, this is how you see the model, and this is how you can just like review. Uh, what, what are you going to be expecting from this in which format or if you want to pass it like for example here uh, I can just like check which uh, values are going to expect here in 400 and 403 400 means bad request and 403 means forbidden it's uh, going to be just telling us hey I in the status so it's saying hey I failed <laughs> basically it's saying hey I just failed uh, we're gonna, it's gonna give us a code, probably it's just gonna return 400, and uh, a message is gonna tell us, hey, I failed because of this, but the developer message is usually the one that is most important, because it will tell you, hey, I tried to do this, but you passed me this, and I cannot operate with that, so you will have to review that information. That's why it's very important to review the developer message, and the extra information, well, it, it, sometimes, it sometimes happens, sometimes it's not something relevant, but usually is, the, is those two that you want to check out if you're having like issues or problems or something like that. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to show you about the whole developer, uh, uh, that ontology.com, our developer portal. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna jump to the next one resource. We also pass a lot of information from here. So for example, I just, I'm just gonna go for it. Like I need to search about REST APIs. And if I look for it, uh, it's gonna it's gonna just show me a lot of information, and you can say, hey, well, uh, I need to know about building blocks and REST APIs, and I can just click on it, and it will display me all that information. The search usually is pretty good; uh, it returns a lot of information. Um, it is giving us here, like, hey, you can go to the through the developer portal, which is the link that I was showing you a couple of seconds ago. You can check uh, our information and yeah there, there's a lot of data here that you can find it's all it's usually for example here this is this is something that we're gonna do later on it gives you like uh like i said step by step like how you can you do it so you can just on rest API integrations click create integration well it's giving you like that step by step which is pretty good and last but not least we have community side and this community side is Pretty dear to me because I a lot of our clients use it to ask very good questions and to create very good suggestions. And I usually just jump in whenever I can and just like start answering as many questions as I can. Uh, usually, usually they are very very hard questions for me, and I have to like <laughs> investigate a lot. And then I can just like, hey, this is how you can do it. This is how it's done, or it's not working, or something like that. So I can give you like an answer. You just need to log in here. Uh, if you already have an account, if you don't, you need to register. And when you register, it may take a day or two for you to be able to log in. Uh, and if you just can't, you can just uh, write us an email to community at ontology.com and our team will answer you. They're usually really, really fast answering. So uh, if you need help, you can get it from, uh, from them. But that's pretty much what I wanted to show you about our resources. Um, they are they're there ready for us to use. So uh, yeah, let's continue. So uh, what do I need? So after you have checked that documentation and you have been reading it, you say, well, I already know what I need. I already know, like I, I, am, I'm, I have a several terms because usually 
you will catch a couple of them. You'll be like, hey, I, I, I already know I need a key, I need a secret, I need a URL, I need some endpoints, I need an application, I need some OAuth, but where do I test it? So how, do, how and where do I get those? So I'm gonna show you now, how do you get the first three? Uh, well, four, well, three, because we already saw where the endpoints are, like the endpoints are here and you can find them all the way down here organized by API. So we already know where I get those endpoints, but what about my key, my secret, and what is my URL? So I'm just gonna jump in. I'm not gonna sign up because I already have an account. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump in and, and do all this. Uh, so I'm just gonna log in. I have my account right here. And when you create an account, this is the first thing that you're gonna see. Like, this is exactly the first thing that you will see. There is nothing else. No, there's nothing else here. You will see this, that's it. Even though I, my account is old and all that stuff, she'll say, well, maybe this is not what I'll see. Yes, this is precisely what you will see. And you're presented with this button, register a registered LTI, LTI application. And yes, please feel free to ask questions uh, in the questions area. And we will be reviewing those as we go along, if you have any. Uh, yeah, we do have, do all the LMSs follow OAuth pattern? It depends on their own implementation usually, but uh, they usually should do it. That's like the, uh, it is a standard actually. OAuth is a standard. So they should, but uh, yeah, it depends on them, I guess. Does Blackboard support global registration like Canvas? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by global registration. So if you can please elaborate, I can, maybe we can just like check that out or maybe Mark can help me answer it, the, answering the question in the chat while I just uh, continue. Okay, so if I register a REST or LTI application, I'm just gonna click here and it's gonna ask me, hey, give me, uh, give me an application name, give me a description, give me a domain and give me a group. We will review those groups later on. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to, yeah, I know the screen is lagging a little bit, so I'm trying to go a little bit lower uh, on this part because I want you all to see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about it. It's, I don't know, maybe it's my internet. <laughs> we don't know, we were trying to solve it, but we just were not able to. But uh, please bear with me. I'm gonna try to go slower on the screen stuff uh, so we can all see it. So I'm really sorry, Janice. Okay, so here we're gonna see, like I said, application name, description, and domains. Application name, we're just gonna call it getting familiar with REST API. That will be uh, the ones that we um, want to check. Uh, that, that will be the name that we wanna put it. You can put whatever you want, but just don't. You cannot use like the special characters. It is not allowed, so just be mindful of that. A description, I'm just gonna use the same name though, because I do wanna have like a really simple name. And for domains, I'm gonna use defcon.blackboard.com. This is just a learn instance. Like, uh, it's just learn. It's just Blackboard learn, but with this URL. And my group, I already have one, so I'll just leave it like that. This is my, my Dave Institution here at LA. So that's pretty much it. If I click on register application, it will save it, and it will provide me three values. It will provide me my key, my secret, and an application ID, which I'm gonna save those because I will be needing them later on. And the important part that you may see is that this information, as it says in on the screen, I'll just gonna leave it there for a second so you can read it, is only shown once for security. So please be mindful of it, just jump in, copy it. I'm just gonna start like uh, copying it here. Uh, there it is, secret. So I'm just gonna move it here, secret. And uh, my application ID. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you were, you have been able to see this. Uh, please let me know in the chat if you can, if you were able to see this part on like getting the, the information. Uh, only shown once. Just let me know in the chat if you were able to see it. I'm gonna guess yes. Okay, let's continue then. Yes, okay, thank you, Janice. 
uh, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to click here on done. There is a done button. So I'm just going to click on done and then it's going to show me my applications. We already have an application registered, but uh, having the application key, the secret and the application ID is not going to be enough because now we have that data, but where do I put it? Where do I put this information? Um, we're going to put it on learn, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about your account. This account I already created. Why? Because there is uh, there is one little thing that usually happens, and uh, it is like, hey, I have this developer, and we hired this developer, but uh, the person left, and he created an account, he created an application, or she created an application, and uh, we just don't have access to it. We don't know what it is. So what do we do? So our recommendation and our best practice is always, hey, when you're registering an account, please, 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 please use uh, an institutional account. Use like uh, my university at meow.com, something, something. Use always an account that you can access later. You as a manager, you as an administrator, you as the institution, be mindful of that. Like, I want this to be able to be accessed later on. I don't want this to be locked by a person. I want me to be able to do so. So uh, please, please, please be mindful of this. Uh, make sure that you're using like, I don't know, maybe Blackboard admin at, at university.com or something like that. Something that you can have access to. And please also make sure that you have access to an inbox. So the inbox is very important because you will receive their, uh, the change password notices. You will receive their like links to change the password if you, lo if you lose it, which can happen. You can forget it. <laughs> I, I had that a couple of times. Uh, and the password is going to ask for a very, very safe password. So there is no nothing. There is no loss there. Um, but um, what happens is, or if, if like I already had like someone who left, I, he's willing, or this person is willing to give me access to it. Well, that's what groups are good for. So I already have this person, Davey.Herrera.Labor.com here. <laughs> It's myself with myself. <laughs> and uh, me being an administrator of this group, I can just add this person to my group. So I can just like add a developer here, but I cannot add like a fake account. I have to, if I do like fake, add fake.com, if I do something like that, uh, it will just tell me, hey, this is not a valid email. This is not registered anywhere. Like, it is it is not a valid uh, email address so you will have you will need to have a valid uh, a valid account already registered in our system so uh, i can for example if that person which i already have one here is there and i say well this is going to be the main account the the they be that herrera blackboard.com i will give this person admin access and then they will see a screen exactly like mine like is exactly like this, like I'm seeing right now. And then they can just like go ahead and remove me like I'm doing here. I'm just gonna click here on the trashy and click, hey, remove this developer from the group. This developer will no longer be able to have the ability to manage applications or add and remove other developers. And I can just like click on remove. And then that person will no longer have the ownership of my application. So be very mindful of that uh, because that application is part of this group. Okay, because when I created it, it was part of this DB institution for LA group. Okay, so that's a very, very useful tip that we usually get uh, on our email. Like what happens if I this, what happens if that, this is how you do it. This is how we uh, actually change that uh, ownership. Okay, now I have already my application, like I was saying here, but how do I move it to Blackboard Learn? Well, it is quite simple though. If you go to your instance, which I have right here, this is uh, an instance that we use for DEF CON 2020. I can go to admin here. We all, we, most of us are like familiar with Blackboard Learn at this point, I guess. If you're not, please, please follow along. I'm gonna try to be a little bit mindful of my screen turning up and being a little bit slow. So I'm just gonna click here in the admin tool click there and it will show me all the administra administrator uh, page, which like I said, most Blackboard administrators are familiar with. And if I scroll down a little bit, you're gonna find a little block that says integrations. If you haven't moved much around of your uh, administrator panel, you will see that this is 
pretty, pretty familiar. Or if in, and if you can't find it, well, you can just like control command F or control F and just look for REST API integrations so that you just should pop up. It is right here. It says REST API integrations is the, the second one from the bottom to top. And if I click it, it will show me a list of my integrations that are already there. Sometimes some clients already have a couple of those uh, that you may ask us about. You will be like, well, this is for, uh, this is internal, this is required, this has to be there. Or there is a collaborate one that you will find, or there is, well, there are a couple of them that they're like always there. You can always ask us about those. And we'll tell you, hey, this is that, <laughs> that we have received those questions before. They're usually here. When it's like trusted, they will tell you this is this is a trusted service. So please don't don't be afraid. It is just trusted internally. So how do I add a new integration? You can click here on create integration. It is at the top on the left behind the title that says REST API integrations. And when I click it, it will load a form that will ask me for just a couple of um, a couple of uh, things. So if I click it. Uh, we will find application ID, which we already have because our developer portal provided me that information. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it and it should be that pre that's pretty much the first part. The second part is a learn. Sorry, my headset decided to turn itself off. Can you guys hear me? Is it working? Yeah, I think it is. Yes, Amy. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It's just my headset decided to turn itself off. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have this learn user, which is called, uh, in this case, we're gonna use DB support, which is the one that I already had. However, we do not recommend to use Blackboard administrator accounts. That's something that we say, no, no, please don't do that. Why? Because this Blackboard administrator account has system admin privileges, and it already has all, all, all the privileges. It already has every permission to do so. And in order for me to demo this, I need this account. But if you want to have an account, like a, like a specific account, you can just like go into your um, uh, 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 learn instance, and you can create a system role, which is very important for us to say system role and if I jump into system roles, we're gonna see a list and I can just like jump in and create a new one. I already did. I already had like a new one here, but I think I lost it, but it's totally fine. I can just like, hey, click and then create a new role. And we're gonna say, well, this is getting familiar with uh, REST API. No, this is not the one. This is getting familiar with REST API 2. And we're gonna just like call it this with a 2. And that's pretty much what I need. I'm gonna submit. And once I submit it, it will show me all this list of privileges here that we will see later on how to map with uh, entitlements. But for now, let's just say, hey, I need this. I need, I, I need this to be registered. Once I submit it here, uh, it will show automatically on my developer portal page as a register site. So I'm just gonna click on submit, it says, Success, integration created. So that's affirming. That's like, hey, I, I did it. Uh, uh, so Jeffrey writes as a question says, should a custom user account be made for each REST API? And that account also have a, a custom system role that only has privileges that are needed for it to function? Yes. Please make sure that you call it in the name of that application. Or if you want that application to be a little bit more broad, uh, you can just create one and I give it the permissions. but make sure to be like very, very restrictive on what that application can do. I will say, yes, create a system role for each application, or you can just create one that you know has all those privileges that all the applications have. But uh, to me, in my mind, it will be better if you just create one for each application so you can be a little bit more granular on those permissions. So you can say, hey, this application now needs this permission. Now I need to add it for it, and the other application cannot have that, uh, uh, that permission. So to me, in my mind, it's better to have a very granular and separated permissions than having just one with many. So it, that's how it's, I see it. But uh, it is up to like your 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 best convenience, to be honest. But uh, I feel that's the best practice to have just like one per application. Okay, so we do have now our application here. It should be registered. Um, 
and as you can see here, it is it is named the same way as I named it when I registered it. And uh, it is also saying, hey, the developer is this. We saw that, didn't we? Like it's called, the, the developer is called Davy Institution here at ILA. And that is the name of our group. So be mindful of the name of your group. That's how you can identify which group has which uh, the application or which application are you using. So if I go to my applications and I go to my site registrations, we're gonna see a little bit of a surprise, which is, hey, we have this application, which is on this site called DEF CON, and I can't even remove it from here. I don't want this, this is not authorized. I don't want this to happen. I can just go ahead and remove it, or I can just go ahead and click here and block. So APIs will not be allowed. Okay, I need them to happen because I need to continue demo to you. Um, but uh, this is something that you can do. You can block it. Maybe you just don't want it to do anything else. You can just like jump in and block it. You don't want it to do something. It's like a like an emergency switch whenever you need to something to happen right now. Um, and if you need to know which sites have this in, uh, application uh, going through, like I need to know which uh, uh, Blackboard Learn institutions have this application, my application, and it shouldn't be more than three because I have test stage in a production. That's it. Uh, I can just go ahead and click here and say, hey, manage placements. No, that's not the one. Sorry, that's not the one. That's not the one. It's the one called What Schools. Sorry. <laughs> if I click here on What Schools, it's going to show me a little window on the right and it's going to tell me, hey, this is the list of schools that have this application. So in my case, when I click it, it's going to show me hey, that I have this school URL, which is defcon.labor.com that is using your application. If you have more, like I said, you should have like test.defcon.labra.com, something like that is stage-defcon.labra.com. You will have those, but um, <clears throat> this is um, pretty much what you will see. Um, you can have, I think, and maybe Mark Kaufman can correct me on the chat. I think you can have up to 10 of these, if I'm not wrong, and then it will say, hey, you're having too many of these. In that case, it will say, hey, please contact your administrator. What you can do is whenever you see, hey, I'm not using this on this instance anymore, uh, you can just go ahead and go in and remove it. 10 of, 10 of which, Davey? Of these registries. Oh, you can have, you can register as many as you need. As many as you want? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I remember there was like a limit of this, uh, but maybe it's no longer there. So, okay. You can have as many as you want. Thank you, Mark, for correcting me. Yeah. So, okay, we already have that. So we already oh, have our oh, site, our what is backup. What so by default, when you, if you, if you're not a paying partner, you get 10. Uh, 10 oh, okay, then yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So by default, yeah. we get 10 if we're not a partner. Okay, yeah, then you thank get, you. You get more as you move up in your uh, partnership. Oh, level. okay. So I thought, I thought I was, I was saying something weird. <laughs> So yeah, I have 10 in my mind. So yeah, you can have up to 10 here. So th those are very important things to have in mind uh, for you to remember when you're deploying this. So if you're a, a normal user, like a normal user, like a developer that only has to develop for your own, um, for your own institution, then this should be more uh, just good enough. If you are a third party who wants to develop an application that you want your clients to use and register, you should be reaching to us so we can help you like put that limit a little bit up, a little bit by a lot. So you can have a lot of clients there using your application if you need it. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about with the developer portal. Hopefully that was uh, useful for you to know. I know we get a lot of questions here on that um, because uh, sometimes, yeah, we can get lost easily there. So. That's how you do it. That's how you register your application on your uh, on your Learn instance, and that's how you create a new application on the developer portal. And uh, we already reviewed those privileges. We will jump into those later on as well. I want to talk a little bit about OAuth, the way we authenticate here. Um, so we use we have two options. We have two-leg authentication and three-leg authentication. Two-leg authentication. We already use, we already have our C key and secret. And uh, what we do is we issue an authentication request to uh, to the server using a post. So we say, hey, this is my key, my secret. Can you please give me a token? Because I need to have access to, it, to, the, to the instance. 
And then if it's correct, if everything goes correct, it will say, hey, yes, here, this is the token. It's going to be valid for just mm -hmm. one hour. It will give you like the time in epoch seconds, I think. And uh, it will be valid only for one hour. Then you can start making calls, uh, like you can see here, making REST calls, passing the token. And uh, if it's expired, then it will just go back and say, well, I need you to do it again. I need you to issue an authentication request with your key and secret. And again, you will receive the token and you can make REST calls. I mean, you can make REST calls. Once it happens, then Learn receives that call and validates that token. And uh, it's just one communication at a time. And then Learn returns the data that you need based on your request. And it will just like, okay, you can go ahead and make another request. That's like two leg authentication. You're giving the data, you're getting the token, you're passing the token with your request. And then learn is processing it and then it returns data. That's pretty much how two leg authentication works. Now for three leg authentication, we have an additional layer which is gonna ask you an authorization because this three leg authentication is gonna, your application is not gonna act like a, just an application, it's gonna act as someone, it's gonna act as this person. So you have you may be familiar whenever you're like giving uh, permissions to an application when you are registering online something. That you have this specific uh, like uh, like button that says allow, so uh, it is going to act as you. There is an application that's going to do stuff as if it was you. So when you give permissions on Google, like I want I want to log in with my Google account, which is this is going to receive these permissions. So this is like the additional step that is going to happen. Uh, besides that, it's going to just uh, generate a code. Uh, you can use that code to access, and then you can just like use it to start doing like transactions and receive and, and send that information. So hopefully that was uh, useful. That this is a short explanation. I know we can just jump in a lot more with OAuth, but um, please be mindful. There is a lot of uh, information you can see in the bottom. I put like the, the the source of that information. You can just like jump in, read that information, and you'll probably get a lot more there. But I just wanted to show you like. This is how this is uh, happening. We're gonna use, uh, for our demo, we're gonna use two-leg authentication, but uh, we may later uh, on that different session, we may use uh, three-leg authentication, or maybe we can just do a session on authentication. It's, it's up to you guys to tell us which ones do you wanna see as well. It will be useful for us to know what else do you want me to go and jump in only on that. So now we're gonna talk about testing. <laughs> And we never test in prod. That's gonna be something that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna tattoo myself on. We never test in production. We never do that. So for uh, third parties, for people who are not clients, we recommend you to, do use, to use AMIs. What are AMIs? AMIs are Amazon machine images that you can use for very low price. Uh, and why do you wanna use that? Well, they are safe, they're isolated environments that you can just like break down as much as you want as much as you can. And then uh, if it's like broken past, past salvation, then you can just like destroy it and create a new one and you will be good to go. Please be very mindful on this. Uh, you can find a lot of information here on this link that I was showing you here, it says. But uh, if I just, just wanna show you, I can go to the page and it says Sandbox, Developer AMI, and it will give you a lot of information about how you can uh, like deploy uh, an AMI. Okay, so it's, 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 it's really comprehensive. You need to follow these steps. Please follow these steps because otherwise uh, when you don't, it's gonna show you like a EC2 something kind of like a URL, which is not valid. It's not passing a valid certificate and the browser is not gonna allow you to move on. Like the browser is just gonna block you. You'll be like, hey, I cannot use it because it's blocking me. What do I do? So if you follow these steps and you have to like issue a certificate, you can use a free one with Let's Encrypt. Um, you will get that. Uh, there is a cost involved in it. Uh, I'm not sure if this is updated. I think it is, but we do not recommend you to use a T2 medium. Uh, we recommend you to use a T2 large. Um, this works as well. It, it doesn't mean that it is outdated. It's just that the requirements have now grown a little bit. So we recommend you to use a T2 large for it. Um, so that's the, those are AMIs. That's how you get a sandbox. If you're a client, you already have your test instance, your staging instance that you can always ask internally to support. Hey, I 
my test instance is broken, please just remake it. And you will receive it. Probably a lot of a lot of you have already requested that and there. So yeah, you can do that. Now, with my with my pretty kitty, we're gonna talk about roles, bookmarks, and limits. So we already talked about this part. Thankfully, yes, we already said, hey, you need to be you need to have a user associated. So you you saw it when I was registering the, the user uh, in Learn. And uh, we, that was going to be part of the application. But in, this, in that case, since it's not using Trilo, we're going to use Tulo. To like the authentication, it's not going to act as that person. It's, gonna act, it's not going to act as, as that person. It's just going to use it to inherit the privileges. And uh, like I said, you have to use system role uh, and create a new role to have those privileges assigned. So like the question was, it was asked before, uh, yes, you should have like a role and then give uh, the permissions that you need there, and you should be good. And um, you will see a lot of the word privilege here. So it says privilege here, a lot here. But you will see in our documentation entitlement. So I, I was showing you here. Where is it? Where is it? OK, I can't find it. But yeah, now oh, it's here. Uh, Jules, I was saying here, hey, you can see uh, our entitlements here on the developer data ontology website. I'm just going to fly through this so I can show you. So for example, let's just say I want to see our requirement, which is course memberships. There it is. So we already have those endpoints. And we have this. So let's just say get course memberships. And we have the entitlements right here. So I know I need this. I know I need course, mem course user view to continue. I know that's required. But uh, if I jump in, let me just go in here. Uh, we're not gonna find that specifically, so we need to map those. We're not gonna. We're gonna. Jo we're gonna go here to our DevCon site, and we're gonna see this, and we're gonna click here on Show All Permissions. And uh, I'm just not gonna see that. I'm just gonna see a lot of permissions here, and I'm not gonna find the one that I need because it doesn't show me like uh, like it says right here. Not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, this one. Uh, course user that view. We are looking for course that user that view, but the way this shows here, the information is not aligned with it. So you'll be like, well, I don't know how to watch that. Well, there is a fix. There is like a a fix, like a workaround for it that you can use. And like I was saying, well. We need to see that one. We have, we know where those entitlements are mentioned, but when I go to my my learning instance, I can see them. So where are they? They don't match, like I was saying. So there is a quick guide that you can see down on the on the bookmarklet. Uh, there is there is the link down there on the source. The first thing that you need to do is you need to create a bookmark on your browser, and uh, pay and you need to paste that JavaScript under the on the part that says URL. And once you do so, it will display that information of the mapping, like the course user view. So you can know like, hey, now I can see it. Now I know where it is. Now I know which permission it relates to. And we're going to look at it now. So we're going to just take a look at it now. Like I was saying, if I go to the site, I don't need this anymore, I think. I'm just going to go to docs.ontology.com. And then I'm just going to jump in here looking for my uh, button, which is called here Managing Entitlements. So when I click on Managing Entitlements, I'm going to see the JavaScript that I was saying. So I have to create a bookmark. I can just go here, click, click here, and bookmarks, and uh, bo a bookmark this tab, however you guys want to do it. You can just jump in and create a new one. I already did. It's this one. I can just edit it and show you. So I have this show entitlements, I called it like that. And this is the whole JavaScript. I just pasted in the URL and that's it. I, I wanted to see it and it's right there. So what happens is I do, if I just already have it and I just click it and you'll be like, well, why should I click a bookmark whenever I'm on a page? Well, if you do so, it's just going to load the JavaScript and it's going to show you the entitlement that you need. So now I can say, well, I need course user view, but where is it? I don't want to like scroll everywhere. So you can just like command F and find it. And there we go. This is the one that we need for that specific course membership. There is always, like I say, there is always like a list of those. So you may want to just like 
uh, go in and use all of them. Like just start looking for them and just click on them and have them selected for that specific role. But that's how you do it. That in hopefully it was simple to show and display because it's really simple to use. And we're going to talk now about uh, API limits. Our API limits, we have 10,000 calls per 24 hours. And uh, you can always check how many calls you have. Whenever you do like a, a get request or something like that, it is going to return you headers that are called, just like you can see in the bottom. It says X rate limit limit, which uh, that one is going to return you uh, a number. And it's going to say, well, this is your limit. You have 10,000 calls. Uh, X rate limit remaining is going to show you, well, you have uh, this number of calls on these uh, last 24 hours. So uh, this is like the, on my on my 24 hours, this is the number of calls that you have remaining. That's what I was trying to say. And now the X rate limit reset is gonna give you a time in seconds, in epoch seconds, on until when you're gonna be receiving, you're gonna uh, have that limit reset. Well, not that limit, but the remaining number of calls reset it. So, uh, it's going to be a count, like a countdown, so it's going to give you epoch seconds, but they're always going down. So you will see how many seconds it's going to it's going to take for it to like uh, reset the calls. Uh, this is very important because you can always follow along, like knowing I already this number of calls and I'm probably going to need. Uh, so I, I used I don't know uh, two thousand calls per hour, so I'm going to need two thousand times twenty four. I'm going to need that. And you can always write us an email. You can always create a ticket. You can always, uh, well, in this case, create a ticket because that's now the new process. But uh, you create a ticket requesting the increase, telling us like, this is my email. This is my uh, group. I need to increase the number of calls by this much. So uh, we're probably going to go back and forth a little bit on you. Well, you need to optimize this. Maybe you can use this endpoint to reduce the number of calls. And you now end up with, I don't know, a thousand a thousand per hour, and you say, well, now I need uh, 24,000, something like that, just to move on, just to continue. And now we're going to go to the good part, which is the Python application. So the Python application, it took me a couple of uh, weeks to develop because I was pretty a little rusty on my Python. Uh, I was not feeling great on that Python, but uh it it was it was actually a really really good exercise python is really nice on getting back to it and uh the first thing that i really want to talk about is caching your token it is a very very expensive call to generate a token so please 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 always always use a way to store it internally in your machine so for example one of the one of the things that i did which is not the best practice but it works i just i, I will show you later on how it works um it's just save it as a file it will contain the data and that's it like you will have the data there and you can just like if it exists you can just like query that file and use it if you have it in memory which is the one that we recommend because it's safer um and probably faster i'm not sure but um you can save it in memory and you can just always query it from there and if it's not there well you can request a new one until one hour I used for this application Python 3.10.8. Um, why? Because uh, first it was the latest version that I wanted to use. And I, I always like to be like on the latest version of Python, but not like the latest, latest. But this is the one that I was uh, allowed to download and it works perfectly fine. I felt it even faster than before. And this version enables switch case, which we use in the code, which I will show you later on. Which libraries I used? Uh, I installed using PyPy uh, those two those two libraries, Wout, Leap, Wout Two, uh, and I just imported that backend application client. And then uh, from requests, Wout Leap, I imported uh, Wout Two session. Those two are you are the ones that I'm using to generate the token. And the one the the three ones that are in the bottom are already part of Python. Uh, daytime, JSON, and OS are available to use you just need to maybe update your python or maybe just check uh, check check yeah update your python that'll be pretty much what you need to do there and they are like enabled and and good to go question about the rate limit are there any bull queries eg i want to retrieve rates for all my courses in my institution 
I have been following that along with my, our director of APIs, and he mentioned that we will be working on those, but there is no ETA yet. So if there is no endpoint right now available for that, then probably it's gonna take uh, a few a, a few a few years for it to come. So right now, what we have right now is pretty good. I know it's not like the bulk we want because there are like certain things that we need to talk, we need to think about internally in terms of how much does it cost machine wise, uh, how much can we load the server with it, how much how much you know like there is a lot of things that need to go through whenever we wanna like uh, work on those pull queries. So if if we had like a bull query for all of that, above all of those things on grades, you will be using only one call because it's only one call that you need to pass through that. But um, again, we just need to to wait a little bit until we have those. Uh, but we, we, we are mindful of that. So thank you for your question, Janice. Uh, how does a token look like? So I have been talking about tokens for <laughs> quite some time already. And it looks like a JSON though. It, look, it looks like just like a JSON. It is you just open the brackets, close the brackets. You have uh, a key that's called authorization and you just pass the data with the, with the token. But we are always waiting in the value for you to use the word bearer. Always, always, always use the word bearer. Like B, capital B, error. Always use it like that. So that's why I put it down there like bearer, insert token. It's very important. And where do I use it? when? When you have it ready for use, you can just send it as you see it in your request and your, and your, and your learn, to your learn instance. So this is a curl example. It's just doing curl uh, xget, which is just like a, a, a dash x, which is just like which verb are you gonna use? What is the, the command? What is the execution? And dash h for header, and it's gonna say, well, this is the header. As you can see, it's just a key value pair. It's just giving you authorization, uh, semicolon, colon, uh, bearer is colon, bearer and the space, the token. That's it. That's it. That's pretty much what we need to do. Then after that comes the the request, but uh, it is it is just right there. And now we're gonna take a look at our application. So let me just switch here to code. Can you please? Do uh, you guys have the chat enabled? Can you please write yes if you can see my chat my my chat. So following with Janice, it's, she says, in that case, how high can we raise our daily rate limit? Oh, you can, you can, you can go pretty high. Like, uh, yeah, you can go pretty high, but you have to be mindful that we're gonna, if it's like a huge, huge number, let's just say 10 million calls, we're gonna be like, hey, well, we need to take a look at the application and see what is it that it's doing, and maybe we can help you out with some optimization for that. But it can go pretty high <laughs> for 24 hours. But yeah, it, you just you just you just need to be mindful on how you're gonna use it, how many calls you're using per hour, and try to optimize that. That's what we we're looking for. Just optimize it. Could okay, I add so some, I, could I add some guess... flavor there, Dean? Oh, please, please jump in, Mark. Yeah. So one thing is that it's the rate limit is per learn installation. So if you have a million, yeah. you get a million for Davies learn system and you get a million for Dylan's learn system. So that mm -hmm. that's one thing to know. And then the other thing is that the the rate limits currently are dependent on the level of partnership that you have. So as you open a developer account, you register a developer account, the number is fairly small. You become a community partner, you get more. And then as you move up in your partnership level, you get even even more as far as the rate limit goes. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I forget that part. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, okay, glad you know it helped you, Janice. Thank you so much for your question. Please, please continue doing so, and it helps us a lot to complement this information. Um, now, uh, do you guys see my 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 code window? Uh, Mark, do you see it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Great. So, like I was saying, those are like the these are like libraries that I was using. I just what I did is that I created an object here called token. And uh, this object is just receiving a bunch of uh, methods here. It's, I have one that is the main function, which is the one that actually creates the token. Um, 
and uh, I'm doing like a whole process on this, like does the token file already exist, which I am saving the token in a file on my system just to query it and make it a little bit uh, faster. Doesn't have, it doesn't mean that it's actually faster, but just like not requesting a new one every time I make a call. Uh, it looks like this, in my case, it says like, hey, this is the expiration date. This is gonna be expired. I created this file, so I passed this data there. And uh, it is actually asking, asking me, hey, does it, does it, does the file already exist? Is the token valid? Uh, uh, can I generate? And then it can just like generate a new token. Uh, it will define the date on which the token which it will expire. Um, I will give you guys a link to this on the chat. Hopefully everybody can see it. The code. Hopefully everybody can see it. Um, it is already uh, like commented, so you can just like know what it's doing. Uh, this function, for example, is just defining a date on which the token will expire. And then it says, hey, well, token expiration date has to be changed to string to be dumped into JSON to the external file because it was it was horrible to, to move. So I had to do a little bit of a tweak in the, in the, in the dates. Uh, it, this one, for example, just generates the token temporary file. This one creates a token authorization dictionary. This one reads the file. So it's just like doing a process like I was showing you before. So for example, if I need um, if I need to do a call, it will just like generate ask if there is already a file. If there is already a file, then what it's gonna do is uh, it's gonna check the token and the date. If the date is um, less, I'm just gonna call it less than now, like my time right now. So it's just gonna say, hey, this is not valid. So it's just gonna remove it and go ahead and go do the process as, well, there is no longer a file. So as, as, if, as, as if it was my first time asking for a token. So it's just gonna do the process over and over and it's just gonna say, hey, do I have a file? Yes, you have a file. Is it valid? Well, yes, it is valid now because the date is no longer greater than now. So we're gonna use that token and it just passes that token in and it just flows through. I have this other one, which is called utils. Uh, this one, this name is probably temporary. I called it color because <laughs> sometimes I'm bad with naming, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so this is pretty magical. I really like what this code does and the level of, of, of abstraction that we reach in here. Although this code is gonna change a lot along during this uh, month or so. Um, so what does it do? It basically just, uh, takes and instantiates first the token, which we already have a function for it, so we don't have to do it again. It just generates the token and the, well, the object will do the whole thing that I just mentioned. And once I have that token instantiated, uh, it returns a list, uh, well, this one is gonna receive the endpoint. So it's just gonna take that slash, uh, course membership, blah, 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 all of those. It's gonna take that and it's gonna look for uh, rejects. This rejects that is right here. So it's gonna look for those curly braces and it's gonna look for those and it's gonna say, hey, this URL has this number of URLs of uh, curly braces and it has within those, these variables. So uh, you need to have, it's gonna generate, what this is gonna generate is gonna generate like a list of those curly braces. I will show you that uh, in a little bit. Uh, this function returns a URL with arguments passed. So basically this one is just a builder. This one is a, a function that is gonna build my URL based on the data that I passed and based on the arguments that the URL is expecting me to pass. Um, uh, this is just gonna check if you're passing correctly a method. So it's just gonna be making sure that you're not gonna, which happened to me a lot. <laughs> I was trying to create something and then it just, I just wrote pot. I was passing a pod. I don't know why. I, I, I wrote lead. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it happened to me a couple of times. And uh, just to make sure that I don't do those human mistakes, which eh, can happen. Uh, calculate the date of reset. Uh, it will just calculate uh, what is the time of reset. It's just going to check, hey, is it, is, it, is it now time for it to reset? Um, and it, this is related to API limits. So it's just going gonna, just gonna to check uh, those, that data. Uh, returns rate limit, which we already talked about it, but we will see it like live now. And this is the main function, which is gonna do the whole request. So like I said, I was using 
patch case. That's why I need Python 3.10, as you can see here on the bottom, 0.8. And uh, what it's gonna do is just gonna change based on based on whatever it is that I need to pass on. If I need to pass on a get, a post, or something, it's just gonna change this from that requests library, which is the the other library that I may or may not have forgotten to put in the on the on the, the presentation but it's the requests library, the one that is making all the magic here. And uh, I love that, that library because it's pretty fair and simple to use. It's pretty human, so it's pretty nice. And it's pretty Python, Python-y, like it uses the, the data very well and it's fast. Uh, you can see also here in the bottom, you can see like there is an example on how to use it and we're gonna look at it now. So I remember I have uh, new credentials. These are like old ones that I already removed, but I already received this information. Do you guys remember in the beginning, I was like, hey, this is how you create an application key. This is a secret. This is how you request it to the developer portal. Well, I already have those. So I'm just gonna copy here and paste it, the ones that I have. And since I already registered my application on this URL, it's not gonna fail because I know I have my application ready there. So I know this is my URL. I know this is my site. So I have it registered right there, it's correct. So you need to make sure to pass in like HTTPS and in this format. When, now, if I go here to course memberships.pi, I'm gonna say, well, uh, I'm gonna import color because I need it. And then I'm just gonna instantiate color here. And I decided to call my variable make because of reasons. And, uh, and to be honest, it's more because I wanted to use it like make request. So I want it to be like a little bit uh, verbosey here. And like I said, it is gonna accept a couple of uh, things here. And the first one that you will see is endpoint. So uh, I'll, I'll just remove this for a moment and I'll just move it here so we can just like get one. So you can see here it says make request and it's expecting an endpoint. The endpoint is just the dash learn, dash API, dash public, dash b1, dash courses, uh, dash no slash uh, courses slash and you can see those curly braces course id so it's gonna be expecting me hey you see there is a variable here you need to pass it here with this exact same value so it says course id just pass it along with course id right now there's a limitation with this where it can only accept like primary keys kind of like values so it's just gonna take underscore number 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 etc underscore one that's the only thing that it's gonna accept for now but uh, it works pretty fast in it well. Now it says method. So you can see here it says get. If I pass, like I did yesterday, I passed like, yeah, I did that, girl. <laughs> I passed that for some reason. It's just gonna fail and say, hey, well, you're not using something correct. So we, we're gonna do a get. So we, that's what we wanna do. We wanna get the courses that this person is on. So, uh, or the users that are a part of this course, I'm sorry. And uh, we're gonna pass along a course ID, which is right there. And as you can see here, this token is, is no longer valid because it was from, uh, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I guess. And uh, if I run this, let's just, fingers crossed, it will work. Okay. Oh, there it is, yay. It works correctly. So uh, it's not a surprise I tested it before, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you can see we're receiving a payload and it's telling me, hey, this is the status code. This is 200 and this is the result. And then it's just gonna provide me the result. I know this is not easily readable. So I actually use a web page that helps me understand what I'm receiving. And uh, it's called JSON Formatter Validator. Uh, I'll just switch to that window for a moment. I'm just gonna wait a couple of seconds so everybody can see it. Okay, hopefully now you guys can see it. Um, this is the JSON that I received. Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. So this is the JSON that I received, the, the one that I'm just like pasting up there. And the one that it is showing me is behind it once it has like formatted it. So now I can see correctly, hey, this is the ID, this is the user ID. This is the course ID of that person. You know, I can see now that information. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we got. Um, we can also 
uh, get, for example, our rate and limits, but um, um, I'm just going to leave it there for now because I think it's not working properly. <laughs> uh, let me just test it once. I can always test it, but I think it's working. Okay, there it is. Make. I'm not showing that, just for everybody to know. Okay, now I can show you. Mark, please let me know when you can see the code page. Code window, sorry. Right, we're still waiting to see it. Right now we're looking okay. at, there it is. There it is, you got it. Okay, perfect. So at the bottom, you're going to see I have a total limit, like I was saying. Uh, I just did a call to print uh, make dot rate limits. And it, at the end, after those uh, asterisks, is telling me, hey, uh, this asterisk, as you can see at the bottom, it's saying, hey, you have a total limit of 10,000, like I should, because my account is new and it's default. Uh, so I have 10,000 by default. The remaining calls are 9,998. Yes, I have done two calls. Well, actually three, but I did two calls already because I already had that. But And this is the date of reset. So I know uh, today at this time, my number of calls will be reset again to 10,000. So um, yeah, it's pretty useful. Uh, you can always use here different methods. You can always use here, for example, post, you can use patch, you can use put. But um, yeah, we, we are a little bit on, on, on the time right now. So uh, hopefully you guys found uh, this useful. Uh, we're going to have four minutes for questions. I know it's not too long, but uh, we're going to open the panel for questions in these four minutes. So please jump in on, on those questions at the, on, at, the, at the little window for questions so we can start like working on it. Salda West asks, is there a public roadmap for REST API features? Rose edition fix have submitted ideas and ontology page features. Yes, my, my grain are all out, but the ideas never appeared in the DL list. Yes, the, those so here's what happens when you do like those submits. Those submits go directly to our product managers. And uh, they evaluate everything. <laughs> they check that everything and they decide on it. So rest assured those are being read, but uh, those may take some time to be responded. So there is a public roadmap. Yes, we usually do presentations on it. I don't know if there is one available. If it is, it is on our community site. So please check our community site, community.ontology.com, because usually it's there where we um, post uh, those uh, public roadmaps. So you can find more information there. Yeah, and Could Zelda, be... just, just send me an email. We'll, we'll talk. I mean, you have specific things we'd like to help you get what you need so that you can get off the B2 um, to a, a yeah. REST integration. You can write us at developers at ontology.com and we can just go deep on, on your request, Zelda. Uh, okay, so we have another question from Harshit and he says, uh, could be out of context, but any specific reason to go with Python to work with APIs? No, no specific reasons, it's just that's the one a programming language that I remember the most. <laughs> you can use PHP, you can use Swift, you can use React, you can use Node, you can use JavaScript, you can use whatever you want to use. Even I already did a demo and there is already a video of, uh, of me using uh, Postman. And you can use that as well to do uh, uh, queries and do requests without having to write an, an application. It's just that I decided to use Python because to me it's just better, but you can use whatever you want to use. And it should work. Like it, if, if uh, you're using the correct libraries and all that stuff, it should just work. So yeah, that's, that, that's the reason why I use Python. <laughs> I feel more comfortable with it, but it will, it may, it will, it will and it may vary per, uh, per institution and per application. Do we have any other questions, everyone? Just one minute. Okay, I don't think we do. So I'll just pass it along to Dylan. Are you here? Is he is Dylan here? Uh, okay, I there he is. <laughs> I'm not abandoning you. Um, 
All right. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, normally we have someone from the marketing team who is actually used to the go to webinar tool and they know where um, we can get feedback sent to us and, and all that good stuff through the, the tool and the registration page and all of that good stuff. I don't actually know that information offhand uh, because they, they usually are the ones that are taking care of that, but they are on holiday. Um, so what I would say is if you have any specific uh, feedback about either this presentation or things that you would like to see from future presentations. At the moment, I would just say uh, email us at, at the developer at anthology.com address and make the title something along the lines of webinar feedback um, and, and we'll be happy to receive it that way, at least, at least for now, uh, until the marketing team trains me more on where to go find this stuff in the proper location. Um, thank you, Davey, for, uh, for, for the presentation. Thank the, the community for, for the great questions, and, and hopefully everyone found this helpful. As I said, we, it is our intent to dive into uh, more specific issues as we move forward. The, the next session that we have planned uh, and, it, and is already scheduled and, and invites already sent out for is, is focused on uh, the basics of LTI, how that works, um, use cases that you can use to solve it, placement locations, things, things like that. Um, we will be be continuing on with sort of that strategy later. Likely, we will do a, a presentation around our ultra extension framework or UEF um, at, at a basic level, and then we'll likely dive into some specific uh, sets of issues. There are topic many many questions that we get around authorization. There are a lot of questions that we get around how to handle cookies. Um, Thing, things of that nature that, that we intend to do presentations on as well. Again, largely to, to help people, A, develop new applications, but, but B, a lot of the questions we've been getting of late are, are focused on how to convert V2s. So that is definitely an area of interest. And Zelda, to, to your point, I believe uh, you were the one that asked about um, ideas that, that you feel are lacking that prevent you from moving off of V2s. Uh, you know, certainly feel free to uh, start up a conversation sooner rather than later. Don't necessarily wait for us to do a webinar. If you already know that there's uh, there's an issue that you're facing, uh, please engage with us. With that, since I do not see any uh, questions, and thank you, Sharon, for your comments, and the, um, I think that that ends it. So thank you, everyone, and have a nice day.